Question six uh, is a question about standing waves. Standing waves are being sent down a Standing waves are being sent down a long pipe uh, with the lower end of the pipe immersed in water. So the waves are being reflected back by the surface of the water. Uh, the pipe is lowered until a standing wave is set up in the pipe. You will then hear a loud note. That's resonance. They first then measure that length. The, then it's lowered again until the loud sound is heard a second time. This is a second resonant frequency. It's one of the harmonics. And they measure this length. Uh, the student obtained these results, so we should use this data to calculate the speed of sound uh, in the pipe. Show your reasoning. So it's very important that you explain yourself as you're going along here. So we can say that the end of the pipe is a node. So difference between L1 and L2 is distance between nodes. And we know that the node to node distance is equal to half a wavelength. So our wavelength here is going to be two times the difference between 0 0.506 and 0 0.170, which gives us a wavelength of 0 0.672 meters. So we can then use our wave speed equation, V equals F lambda to multiply the frequency 500 by the wavelength 0 0.672 and it gives us a speed of sound of 336 meters per second. Now as always we should suddenly check our answers does that sound like a realistic speed for the speed of sound ball? Yes it does. Speed of sound is around 340 meters per second. Part B the student uh, repeats the experiment but sets the frequency of the sound to 5000 hertz. Suggest and explain whether these results are likely to give a more or less accurate value for the speed of sound than those obtained in the first experiment. There's a couple of marks available here. So if we have a higher frequency, this gives a lower wavelength. Therefore, the gap between harmonics, that is the, the distance you're moving the tube between uh, loud sounds, is smaller. This will result in a higher percentage uncertainty in the measurement of the length, because we've got a smaller Smaller length, our ruler hasn't become any more precise, therefore the experiment is less accurate. In part C, we now have the pipe removed from the water and laid horizontally on a bench. Uh, the frequency of the sound waves is adjusted until a standing wave is set up. Point P is a distance of a quarter of a wavelength from point Q at the far end. Now, when we had our column of uh, closed at one end, in other words when it was in water, we had a node at one end and an anti-node at the other. So we had a wave something like this. When we have a column of air that is open at both ends, you have an anti-node at both ends. So you get a pattern more like this. Excuse the bad the bad drawing. So we need to explain how and under what conditions a stationary sound wave is formed in the pipe. Describe and compare the motion of the air molecules at points P and Q. So the standing wave is formed because 
the reflected wave superposes or interferes with the incident wave resulting in a standing wave with nodes and anti-nodes. So that's explaining uh, the conditions necessary for a stationary sound wave. We know that we have anti-nodes at each end because both ends are open. So if an end is closed, remember it's a node. If an end is open, it's an anti-node. This means that Q is an anti-node. So we're describing and comparing the motion of the air particles, air molecules at points P and Q. Q is an anti-node, therefore the molecules are oscillating with a maximum amplitude, whereas P is a node. We know this because uh, the distance from anti-node to anti-node is half a wavelength. So the distance between a node and an anti-node is a quarter of a wavelength. So if P is a node, that means that the molecules are not oscillating. The air is stationary at P. Thank you for watching this video from Cowan Physics. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe and visit cowanphysics.com.